Welcome to our second uh, Advent series, online series, and I wanted to talk about uh, the goodness of our bodies. Uh, as you can see, there's a theme here, the, the use of our bodies from last week in worship and in the world, and now the goodness of our bodies. Some may say who might have a disability or maybe they're getting older and their bodies aren't uh, cooperating maybe like they used to, they can say, well, my body's not good. Um, and and I would say, okay, well, your body is definitely probably frustrating uh, if it's not living up to your expectations. Um, your body can definitely be a detriment to um, what your mind wants you to be able to do. Um, it can hinder you from entering into non-accessible buildings um, it can keep you home and away from people because you just can't get out of your house. And I agree, that that can be hard to say that that is good. And that's not good. Um, uh, our bodies are a part of this, this um, world, and uh, unfortunately, our bodies are not perfect. But they are good. So what do I mean when I say good? I, I mean that... Our, our bodies are created and molded by God. That the intended purpose of our bodies was so that we could experience the goodness in this world. God didn't want us to suffer. God doesn't want us to suffer. Uh, these bodies aren't meant to add to our suffering. If anything, they're meant to help us experience and and find joy in, in this world. And unfortunately, due to sin and uh, us not living in accordance of how God would like us to live in this world, uh, we have diseases and, and a whole bunch of issues because of the chemicals that we have. Uh, and, you know, things just aren't working the way that maybe God or we intend. Um, and that can be hard to say that our bodies are good, but they are good. They're good in the sense that when God looks at us and sees us, God calls us good. Broken, but good. Worthy of love. I think that's more of what good means. Our bodies are worthy of love. From us, from God, and from others. St. Peter's High Spire, when I was ordained, got me a gift. And they got me an icon of my favorite Bible passage. And it's right up in the beginning in Genesis. As you can see, here's God. Here's Adam and Eve. Now, some will see this icon as uh, a bad thing. <laughs> This is the time where Adam and Eve are out of the out of Eden, uh, you know, the place where there is no suffering, where uh, they were naive to the evils of the world. Uh, they could live in paradise, but they chose to understand evil and to experience evil above living in this contained um, goodness bubble called Eden. Uh, so what happened is uh, God said, you would surely die if you ate of this fruit of good and evil, knowledge of fruit of knowledge of good and evil. And uh, by the grace of God, God did not kill them. Uh, instead, God kicked them out of Eden to continue living. Now, what this meant is, is that they understood what God understood. They understood that evil was evil and caused, you know, ripples and what what we consider to be good. It, it affects our, our ability to, to live in a comfortable and joyous manner. Uh, it doesn't mean that there isn't joy and that there isn't goodness around us, uh, but, you know, evil gets in the way. Sin gets in the way. And Adam and Eve chose that life. And they chose that life knowing that they would die. So there's something to say about human nature. Uh, that when given the opportunity to live in, in a perfect uh, atmosphere where there is no suffering and there is no um, trials or tribulations, 
We would rather die and know the truth than live in perfect naivete. So I'd like to keep, help keep that in the back of our minds. But going back to this icon, as you can see, God, yes, kicked Adam and Eve out, but that was an act of mercy because the, the, the rule was you would die. And there's also another act of mercy that God did, and that's clothe Adam and Eve. And God didn't desert them. God still was with them. God wasn't walking among them like, like he was in the, in the Garden of Eden. But God never deserted God's creation. And God provided them a head start by clothing them. And I think that is one of the most important lessons that we can learn here. When we think that God is, you know, surely going to kill us uh, for the wrongs that we do, that we are damned to hell if we don't do what God says. I want us to remember about the mercy and the grace that God showed the very first humans, the ones who only had one rule uh, to follow. We have, we have hundreds, if not thousands now, of rules to follow making it impossible for us not to break them. They had one, and they broke it, and God still showed them mercy. Just like God showing us mercy, God showing Adam and Eve mercy when, when they broke a very simple rule just not to eat a piece of fruit, we will not be damned to hell for the sins that we do. That doesn't mean that there isn't a punishment. There was a punishment for Adam and Eve. There certainly was. They didn't get to be in the Garden of Eden anymore. But they didn't die. And they weren't sent into an eternal damnation of suffering. God was still with them. There was certainly struggle. That punishment, you know, they had to understand that what they did was wrong. And that there are consequences to our actions. But there is no reality where God turns God's back on God's creation. God will always fight to be in relationship with us. And the only way that is possible is by giving us unlimited grace and mercy. Undeserved grace and mercy. I know that can be hard for us to, to, to desire, to want, to, to even accept. But the God of the Bible is one who ultimately wants relationship with us and wants to be with us for eternity. God does not desire hell. Even the worst of the worst in this world they will certainly get their punishment. There are consequences to their sin. But they will also be given grace and mercy and an eternity of God trying to redeem them and bring them back into the fold. And just like in God's mercy to us, we are called to give mercy to ourselves, to our bodies, to see that they are worthy of love even if they aren't living up to expectations. And that we shouldn't give up on our bodies. Learn to live with our limitations and give thanks to God that we are still able to experience this world. Even in all the struggle and the suffering. Because there is goodness to be found. And there is mercy to be accepted and given. If only we are willing to accept it and willing to give it. May God's mercy be ever overflowing on you 
May you be able to accept God's grace with no hesitation. And may you understand that God never desires God's people to be turned away, but to be constantly searched for, sought after, and brought back into the fold. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.